Going ahead over here to the uh, to the frame. This is my favorite part of the truck. I'll introduce myself first. My name is John Karras. I'm the chassis and suspension manager for the F-150, as well as our other sport trucks. Um, it's been my pleasure to work on this product for most of the 25 years I've been around at Ford. Um, did one of the previous versions with Matt when he was the chief engineer a while back, and uh, now we got to work on this one. Um, so this frame is all about being the backbone of the truck, right? We started with the best frame in the industry on our current F-150. Our task was to make it even better than that in terms of customer function that we've heard a lot about already. But at the same time, uh, by use of some, uh, some, some new materials and some clever engineering techniques to take some significant weight out of it, to contribute back to the capability that you heard about. So again, stronger, stiffer, lighter. Um, so that's what it's all about. Just an example of the detail we went into on the engineering purpose or our effort in the frame. So that, it, it represents that much of the frame rail. Um, we were able to take uh, almost 12 pounds out of this part from the P415, our current F-150, to this version. It's got, a, and, and it manages to do the same amount of work as you see here. And how did we do that? We, we took a we took a significant gauge out of the part, um, and we went up to a higher strength steel. <coughs> but the important part of how we took the gauge out is a typical box section has four corners. This guy has basically three corners on each of the major four corners, so it ends up with twelve corners. Um, we were able to patent that design, um, and why does it work? Think of a corrugated box, right? You have a corrugated box, it's really just three sheets of paper on the side wall of the box. You got a shin side sheet, an outside sheet, and a piece of zigzags down the middle. It's a zigzag piece with all of those corners <coughs> that give it the ability to take a lot of crush load. I can stack box on top of box, they don't collapse, but it's because of that feature. It's the same idea that's applied here, right? We just added the corners, and by having those corners, it takes much more energy to crush this kind of a cross section which allowed us to take the gauge out, the part ended up doing the same job. Again, 12 pounds out of just that, that section of the frame. Six per side. Um, so moving back on, on, the, uh, on the front rail, on an F-150 currently, that's a hydroform tube. When we did that part, it was, uh, it, it was, a, it was, a, uh, it was a new technology for us. Um, the downside as we got into the newer materials that we have now at our disposal is that the hydroform means that it's the same gauge all the way around. We wanted the ability to manage gauge or metal thickness to the inside and the outside because I want to be able to put metal where I need it to be to do all the work that the frame has to do, but I want to be able to reduce it for weight efficiency where I can. Um, so in this particular piece, through high strength steel and the, man and, and the inboard and the outboard rail, we're able to take out significant amount of weight. Um, that, it, it looks like that before a crash. Its, pers its purpose in life is really to manage energy in a frontal crash. Um, it has a lot of work to do because that's what it looks like after a crash. Okay, That's probably a 30 mile an hour frontal. Um, so why do, I, why do I spend so much time on this? In the process of all that weight reduction, about 70 pounds on a typical frame, we actually added a cross member again for extra stiffness, uh, torsional rigidity. Um, again, the frame is doing more work, um, but because of all the engineering techniques and the materials, we're able to offset that weight and still take 70 pounds out. With the aluminum body coming in, the body mounts actually moved out slightly. We took advantage of that in the frame by adding some section in the mid rails. Um, we made them a little bit taller, we made them a little bit wider. Again, why does that matter? Because with the cross section, I have that cross section now doing work instead of the gauge that we had on the F-150 currently. So, a little bit more metal to make the bigger section, but by the offsetting the amount of gauge that we have, it, it's an offset and it, and it comes out as a weight savings in the end. Um, when I move back to what we call the kick-up rail, this is an example of where we went to Taylor Roll blanks. And again, this is all about putting metal where it needs to be for function and taking it out where I can for weight efficiency. Taylor roll blank basically means that this particular piece of the frame, although it looks like one particular stamping, it's actually differing in gauge as I go down the rail. Okay? Typical stamping would be the same gauge all the way through, but with the Taylor roll blank, I can manage the gauge to that rail. This is not that particular blank, but it gives you the idea what's going on. Each of the gray regions represents a different thickness of this particular flat piece of metal. The blue regions are the transitions from one thickness to the other. Um, by the time I stamp it, 
it looks like this. But again, it's all about putting metal where it wants to be for function, getting rid of it where we can for weight efficiency. Um, as I moved back to the rear of the frame rail, this guy is one of my personal favorites because we talked a little bit about towing earlier, right? So what you'll notice here is that the rail dips down. A typical frame rail will come straight back and the trailer hitch will, will be attached under the rail. What that means is that there's a lot of reinforcements to get its rigidity back and strength the connection to the rail. When we looked at that, we said, how do we get rid of those reinforcements? Because they're it's kind of an inefficient use of material at the end of the day. So I said, well, why don't we just drop the rail down so it basically ends coincident with where the trailer hitch wants to be. It, it seems pretty simple, just like putting the corrugated box section on the front, but it hadn't been done. Um, this is another feature we were after, we were, we were on after a patent on. And it's really just a kind of simple, uh, it's a simple idea, but it, it doesn't pop out at you if you don't, if you don't think about it. So, and this was, a, this was enabling us to take out all those reinforcements, realize a weight efficiency, and again, invest it back into the trailer tow capability of the vehicle. This, combina this in combination with the trailer hitch um, that's, that's integrated into the bumper got us to where we are, where we are for uh, improved trailer tow capability. Um, I guess the last thing I'll mention is uh, the particular frame. It's not really related to the uh, uh, the weight savings, but the e-coat. We've always been an e-coated frame. We have a, uh, a thicker e-coat coating or coating thickness in this frame. It improves the uh, corrosion protection for our customers, and that's just kind of a added kind of focus that we put into again to go after what our customers are looking for. So, any any questions? <coughs>